Thank you. This evening, I'd like to start tonight by asking you a question. If you were an idea, how many of you would be happy to be living at the school that you currently work in? If that seems like a strange question, welcome to the Learning to experience, where that's exactly what we're about, asking questions that are going to shift us into new ways of thinking. So, that question, would you want to be an idea at your school? If you think it's irrelevant, then let me phrase it a different way. How many of you personally, or how many of us have had colleagues who have had a small seedling of an idea, but have not been encouraged to bring that idea into the larger ecosystem that is our school? This evening, that's what I want to talk about, the notion of idea hospitality. And I'm going to invite you to have that conversation with me through the lens of the dinner party. It's relatable. Every one of us has had an amazing experience at a dinner party, and I'm willing to bet that every one of you has also had a not so amazing and thrilling experience at a dinner party. The lens applies itself well, I think, because really the things that we need to do to host great dinner parties are exactly the same things that we need to do in terms of hosting our ideas. I've recently moved schools, and that's pushed me to think about the ways that different schools go about hosting their ideas. And what I invite you to do is take this recipe card of seven ideas and apply it back to your school to allow you to host an audit of just how hospitable your school is when it comes to new ideas. Step one, the welcoming. Hopefully, the dinner parties that you're showing up to are dinner parties that you have been invited to. And then once you arrive, you get a sense that that was intentional, that really your host wants you there. Now, imagine an idea arriving to your school. Is that idea met with cynicism, skepticism? Is that idea told, sorry, we just don't have time for you this year? Or is that idea met with an open mind? with people say, who say to that idea, tell me a little bit more. Item two, once you're in the dinner party, does your host say to you, this is your place, wait here, we will tell you when dinner is ready to be served? Or do your host say, come around, I'd like to tour you on my home? When ideas are inside the gates of our schools, do we then say, ideas, this is the space where you will live? And here are the one or two people with whom you can engage. Or, once ideas are on our campus, are they free-range ideas? Can they tour all the facilities and be influenced by a variety of faculties? Number three, when you arrive to the dinner party, does your host say, this is the recipe, what do you think? Do you have other ideas? Do you have other recipes? Can you taste this? Tell me what ideas you have. You're welcome to salt and spice according to your preference. And once those ideas are happening in our school, are we telling teachers, please follow the recipe to the T? Or are we saying to our educational staff, we trust and value your professional judgment, and we want you to remix, remodel, put it into the context that's going to work best for your students? Number four, the secret sauce. The secret sauce for a dinner party is exactly the same as the secret sauce for idea hospitality. It all comes back to the conversations we have and the way that we have them. Is the conversation being dominated by one or two people at the table? We all have an uncle like that. Or, instead of valuing authority, do we value diversity of thought? And are we seeking out people who will have and offer a different perspective around that idea? Number five, what I like to think of as the unsung hero of dinner parties everywhere. Can your idea get rid of waste that's weighing itself down? And is the idea able to do that because it's been brought up on a healthy diet of fiber, otherwise known as critical feedback? Number six, the place setting. Do you have the right utensils for which to best savor your meal? Once your idea is at school, do you have a toolkit to match it? And if you don't, do educators have enough of an opportunity, enough time to compare, think about, do research around tools that will do more to sharpen and shape that idea? 
And last but not least, number seven. Does the meal end on a nice, sweet note? As educators, once the idea has been living in our school long enough, are we able to recognize this is the time that the idea can now sort of run its course, and we can let go of that idea to make room for new ideas? So why does this matter, idea hospitality? It matters because all of us in this room right now are in a very unique position. Over the course of the next two days, you are going to be introduced to dozens and dozens of ideas. And you all have the opportunity to reimagine yourselves as the Martha Stewarts of idea hospitality. Will you bring that invitation back to your school? Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.